America and China are preparing to fight a total war in the South China Sea, and the trigger will likely be the conflict between the Philippines and China. Tensions between the Philippines and China are quickly escalating and could result in a full-blown war that could engulf America into direct military confrontation between the two superpowers. A top US general issued a warning to his staff that a war with China over the South China Sea may break out in two years. In a memo dated February 1st, leaked on social media, US Air Force General Mike Minahan ordered officers under his command to prepare for the next fight. I hope I'm wrong. My gut tells me we will fight in 2025. Minahan ordered Air Force commanders to make efforts to build a fortified, ready, integrated joint force maneuver team ready to fight and win inside the first island chain and the South China Sea. US analysts predicted that a war with China will likely be in 2027. If China chooses not to engage in conflict over Taiwan, the Philippines could be the next target. Tensions between the Philippines and China over the South China Sea have been fueled by competing territorial claims and maritime disputes in the region. The Philippines and China are both claimants to various features in the South China Sea, including islands, reefs, and shoals. China's expansive claims as demarcated by the Nine Dash Line overlap with the Philippines Exclusive Economic Zone or EEZ and territorial waters, particularly around the Spratly Islands and Scarborough Shoal. The Philippines contests China's historical claims and asserts its rights under the UNCLOS to its EEZ and Continental Shelf, which include valuable fishing grounds, natural resources, and potential hydrocarbon reserves. Tensions between the Philippines and China have been exacerbated by incidents at sea, including encounters between Philippine and Chinese vessels in disputed waters. These incidents often involve harassment of Filipino fishermen, interception of Philippine maritime patrols, and encroachment into Philippine claimed areas by Chinese Coast Guard. The 2012 standoff between Philippine and Chinese vessels at Scarborough Shoal, which resulted in China gaining de facto control over the feature, remains a source of bitterness and resentment in the Philippines. China has transformed reefs and shoals into artificial islands, equipped with airstrips, missile systems, enhancing its military capabilities, and asserting control over disputed areas. In 2013, the Philippines initiated arbitration proceedings against China under UNCLOS, seeking to clarify the legality of China's maritime claims and assert its rights in the South China Sea. The permanent court of arbitration in The Hague ruled in favor of the Philippines in 2016, invalidating China's Nine Dash Line and affirming the Philippines' rights to its EEZ. China rejected the arbitration and continues to assert its claims based on historical rights, refusing to recognize the jurisdiction of international courts or comply with their decisions. A crucial piece of information has been deliberately kept hidden from the public. The Philippine Navy in May 1990 deliberately grounded at Ayongin Shoal, the Sierra Madre, a landing ship tank without President Estrada's permission but under orders of his defense secretary, Orlando Mercado. The Chinese were furious by the grounding of the Sierra Madre in Ayungin Shoal, as President Ramos had de facto given up the area four years earlier in 1995, when his Navy vessels fled after being blocked by Chinese maritime surveillance vessels. The Chinese blocked the Sierra Madre at Ayungin Shoal on its way to get closer to Mischief Reef. The LST was scaring more than two dozen foreign and local journalists to the area, who later rode on two Bell UH-1 helicopters to take photos 
of the facilities that the Chinese had built on stilts in Mischief Reef. Ramos's operation was successful as the photos were decimated worldwide. Years later, a general involved in the operation disclosed that another expected outcome would have been the Chinese shooting down the helicopters, which had crude press markings but no translation into Chinese, killing the journalists and creating international outrage against China, and it would be pressure to dismantle and abandon the facility. Estrada's defense secretary, Orlando Mercado, asked the Navy for ideas on how to reverse Ramos's loss of Ayungan. It was the Navy chief then, Eduardo Santos, who proposed the grounding of the Sierra Madre at Ayungan, arguing that such vessels represented an extension of the Philippine territory. Only the shipwreck is considered the owning country's territory, not the area surrounding it. They are required to be removed by international practice as soon as they can by their registered owners or else dismantled by the state nearest to them. Mercado ordered the operation. Estrada was furious when he learned about the grounding of the vessels and ordered these vessels to be removed as soon as possible. Estrada wanted to draw the Philippines closer to China. The Chinese threatened to cancel the scheduled official visit in November of that year of Chinese Premier Zhu Rangqi to the country. Zhu's official visit also to attend an informal meeting of officials from ASEAN countries. Japan, Korea and China were supposed to give a boost to Estrada's international image, while the BRP Panget was quickly towed away by a Hong Kong tugboat hired by the government. The Navy could not find a tugboat willing to sail through the dangerous waters of these Spratleys. The Sierra Madre's engines were also damaged, so they could not assist a tugboat in escaping from its grounding. China and the Philippines reached what they thought was a wise agreement. The Philippines would repair the Sierra Madre's engines even if it took the Navy months to do so, and find a vessel powerful enough to tow it, but it would station a contingent of Marines to guard the vessel from pirates and possible scavengers who would dismantle the ship for its steel. The Chinese who had known that the vessels were deliberately grounded in order to maintain a symbolic claim in Ayong Shaw and Scarborough insisted that while the Philippines could supply the marines with the necessities of survival, it could not supply it with materials to repair it, much less to transform into a permanent facility. Administrations after Estrada, including most of Aquino III's, had complied with the agreement rather than risking Navy or Coast Guard vessels being blocked and shooed away by Chinese vessels if they attempted to bring in repair materials. But in retaliation against the arbitration suit filed in 2013 by the Philippines against China involving the South China Sea issue, the Chinese strongly demanded that year for the Philippines to comply finally with this agreement to remove the Sierra Madre. The Aquino government did not violate the agreement and sent only survival supplies to the soldiers on the ship, but no supplies for repairs. Let's look at a hypothetical scenario of war breaking out between China and the Philippines. Tensions between China and the Philippines have escalated over territorial disputes in the South China Sea, with both countries asserting conflicting claims to various features in the region. Despite efforts to resolve the disputes through diplomacy, the situation has become worse, leading to a military confrontation. What would the triggering event be like? A series of incidents in the South China Sea, including clashes between Philippine and Chinese vessels near disputed islands and reefs, culminates in a direct military confrontation. Diplomatic channels fail to defuse tensions. In the initial stage, China launches a coordinated military offensive against the Philippines, targeting key strategic locations and military installations. The initial assault aims to neutralize Philippine defenses 
and established Chinese control over disputed territories in the South China Sea. In the military operation phase, China's military superiority including its naval and air forces allows it to achieve air and sea dominance early in the conflict. Chinese forces conduct amphibious landings and aerial bombardments to seize control of Philippine claim islands and reefs. The Philippines, though outmatched in terms of firepower and resources, employs guerrilla tactics and asymmetric warfare to harass and delay Chinese advances. Philippine forces focus on defending critical infrastructure and population centers from Chinese attacks. What would the response of the international community be like? The outbreak of war between the Philippines and China triggers alarm within the international community with neighboring countries and major powers expressing concern by the escalation of hostilities. The United States, as a treaty ally of the Philippines, deploys naval assets to the region and signals its readiness to defend Philippine sovereignty. However, the risk of direct military confrontation between the US and China raises fears of broader regional conflict. Diplomatic efforts to mediate the crisis led by the United Nations and regional organizations like ASEAN face significant challenges amid entrenched positions and escalating violence on the ground. As the conflict escalates, the risk of broader regional instability grows, with neighboring countries bracing for potential spillover effects and economic disruptions. Diplomatic efforts to negotiate a ceasefire and resolve the conflict face significant obstacles, as both the Philippines and China remain entrenched in their positions and reluctant to compromise on core issues.